On Friday, February 28, 1997 in Los Angeles, two highly skilled bank robbers stormed a North Hollywood brand. They were heavily armed with military-grade weapons and clad in full body armor. Fate took an unexpected turn when a Los Angeles Police Department officer happened to be in the right place at the right time and witnessed the robbers entering the bank. The police quickly surrounded the area, anticipating that the robbers would barricade themselves inside. However, contrary to expectations, the two criminals swiftly emerged from the bank and unleashed a hail of gunfire, firing over a thousand rounds at the police. This intense exchange of over 2,000 rounds of ammunition turned the streets of North Hollywood into a nightmarish battleground. The two gunmen involved in the North Hollywood shootout initially crossed paths at a Gold's Gym in Venice Beach, California. Larry Phillips Jr., 26 years, a native of Los Angeles and skilled in real estate scams, and 30 years, Emil Matasaranu, an immigrant from Romania and a college graduate with an above-average IQ. Both shared an interest in weightlifting and bodybuilding, which led to their friendship. Despite their different upbringings, they bonded over various subjects, including firearms, philosophical discussions, their challenging childhoods, and a shared disdain for authority figures. Larry Phillips Jr. had a troubled upbringing, as his father had a criminal history, while Matasaranu witnessed the violent collapse of Romania in 1989 on live television, contributing to their mutual feelings of resentment towards the world and those in power. In October 1993, their troubles escalated when they were pulled over by an undercover Glendale detective while driving a stolen rental car. During the encounter, Phillips provided a false name, and when the detective inquired about the vehicle's ownership, Matasaranu claimed it belonged to Phillips' mother. Upon further inspection, the detective discovered a Glock 17 with a 33-round extended magazine concealed in Phillips' waistband. Matasaranu stashed his own firearm under the car seat. Backup officers arrived and both men were arrested. A search of the vehicle yielded a substantial cache of weapons and suspicious items, including a Norinco firearm, 1,700 rounds of 7.62 ammunition, three Chinese-made 75-round drum magazines, six smoke bombs, two explosive devices, a gas mask, wigs, three different sets of California license plates, and two cans of gray hair coloring. Their involvement in criminal activities was evident from the items they had in their possession. Larry Phillips faced several charges, including conspiracy to commit robbery, grand theft auto, unlawful weapons activity, carrying a concealed firearm, and felony perjury. Surprisingly, both he and Emil Matasaranu received sentences of less than one year in jail for these charges. On June 14, 1995, in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Winnetka, around noon, Phillips and Matasaranu targeted a Brinks truck. They followed the armored vehicle until it made a stop, where they observed the guard making a delivery. As the guard returned and opened the back doors of the truck, leaving himself vulnerable, Phillips and Matasaranu attacked using AK-47s to open fire. Both guards were shot, and $120,000 was stolen. Fortunately, the guards survived the attack, but the violent nature of the robbery, their tactics, and the use of high-powered weaponry attracted widespread attention. The FBI took a keen interest in what they initially called the AK-47 bandits. Their criminal activities didn't stop there. On March 27, 1996, in the Woodland Hills area, Phillips and Matasaranu attempted to rob another Brinks truck, but failed miserably. They once again stalked the armored vehicle and opened fire when it stopped, but the driver managed to escape. The criminals briefly chased the vehicle before fleeing the scene. After getting away, they abandoned their vehicle and set it on fire. Despite this recent setback, just two months later, they escalated to bank robbery. On the morning of May 2nd, they carried out their first takeover heist, kicking open the bank doors, firing warning shots into the ceiling, looting the vault, and making their escape in under six minutes with almost $750,000. 
Encouraged by their success, they struck again on May 31st, taking over a Bank of America branch in Winnetka and leaving with nearly $800,000. In total, they had stolen $1.6 million in just 30 days. These daring and lucrative heists, along with their ability to evade capture, deeply concerned the FBI's Violent Crimes Task Force and local law enforcement. The suspects had transformed from violent outlaws into skilled professionals in a short span, prompting the FBI to change their nickname from the AK-47 Bandits to the High Incident Bandits. In the following months, a large-scale collaborative effort involving multiple law enforcement agencies across Los Angeles County was initiated. Officers were stationed outside banks and potential targets frequented by the high-incident bandits. However, during this time, the robbers decided to take a break, using it to enhance their arsenal and primarily plan their most ambitious heist yet. Larry Phillips and Emil Matasaranu zeroed in on Branch 384 of the Bank of America in North Hollywood, California, as their target. This branch stood out as the largest bank in the area and promised a potential haul of at least $2 million for just 10 minutes of work. It was an ideal choice for various reasons. Professional bank robbers typically target branches located at street corners for better escape routes, and Branch 384 met this criteria. It occupied a single building lot, making it effectively a corner branch with two corners, providing access to nearby freeways and city side streets leading into the valley. It was the perfect stage for their planned heist. They selected Friday, February 28th as the date for their operation. Preparing for a confrontation with law enforcement, they outfitted themselves with a level 3A Kevlar body armor covering their front, back, and extremities, rendering them nearly invulnerable to police officers armed with 9mm handguns. Their arsenal included full-auto conversions, 75-round Chinese magazine drums, a semi-automatic HK-91, two Beretta firearms, and a Bushmaster XM-15 dissipator. They also stashed several thousand rounds of spare ammunition in the trunk of their 1987 Chevrolet Celebrity. Both men understood that there was no turning back. Their previous robberies had sealed their fate and after a prior arrest, they were aware they faced life imprisonment. From that point on, they realized that any encounter with law enforcement could only result in one outcome. On the morning of the robbery, the two men each consumed an unknown quantity of phenobarbital, a central nervous system depressant. They donned their gear, drove to the bank, synchronized their watches, and at 9.17 a.m., Larry Phillips and Emil Matasaranu stormed into Branch 384, firing shots into the ceiling and loudly announcing, this is a robbery. During his regular patrol, LAPD patrol officer Martin Periello happened to be at the intersection of Archwood Street and Agnes Avenue when he noticed the two heavily armed gunmen entering the bank at precisely 9.17 a.m. In an instant, the moment before the heist started had become the moment it ended. Inside the bank, the gunmen took control, continuing to fire rounds into the ceiling. After securing compliance from everyone present, Phillips and Matasaranu turned their attention to the bulletproof door that granted access to the bank tellers and the vault. Surprisingly, this door, designed to withstand small caliber ammunition, gave way after just a few shots from their modified Norinco firearms. With access to the vault, the robbers instructed the tellers to fill their bags with money while keeping a close watch. However, they quickly realized a major problem. There was considerably less money in the vault than they had expected. The intense rush of adrenaline, combined with extreme stress, caused the two men to lose their composure. Outbursts of gunfire followed, driven by sheer rage. Matasaranu's anger escalated to the point where he emptied an entire 75-round drum magazine into the vault, destroying the remaining cash. In total, the tellers managed to pack only $303,000. Meanwhile, outside the bank, LAPD officers Periello and Farrell had entered the perimeter of a parking lot across the street. 
More officers quickly arrived at the scene. Larry Phillips, growing increasingly anxious, noticed the unusual silence outside the bank. There was no longer any pedestrian or vehicle traffic on the typically busy street. As he walked halfway out the bank, he realized that all he could hear was the distant noise from the freeway, located about half a mile away. In that moment, he came to the grim realization that the police were waiting for them. At this point, both Phillips and Matasaranu could hear the approaching sirens of the LAPD's reinforcements, as well as the distinct sound of dye packs exploding inside the money bags, rendering the bills completely worthless. Outside the bank, officers were getting ready for what they anticipated would be a barricade situation. Suddenly, Larry Phillips burst out of the North ATM lobby entrance, indiscriminately firing rounds at the officers. In the hail of gunfire, seven officers and three civilians were immediately injured, all from a distance of 200 feet. In response, the officers returned fire, but their 9mm handguns had minimal impact on the heavily armed gunmen. LAPD officer James Aboravan who had only graduated from the academy a few months prior, managed to land a shot on Phillips, injuring him. In retaliation, Phillips shifted his focus to Zaboravan. The officer courageously dove across his fellow officers, shielding them from Phillips's gunfire. Seeking cover, Zaboravan entered a nearby dental office where a dentist named Jorge O. Montes quickly transformed his dental practice into an impromptu emergency room. During this intense exchange of gunfire, the elite members of the LAPD SWAT team arrived on the scene. Many of these SWAT team members were among the founding members of the LAPD's first ever SWAT team, renowned for their formidable reputation and a high success rate in resolving high-risk incidents. Larry Phillips retrieved the HK-91 and began firing at news helicopters with 308 caliber rounds. He managed to hit the rear stabilizer of a KCAL-9 chopper. However, a group of officers who had raided a nearby gun store to acquire higher caliber weapons returned and disabled the HK-91 with a well-aimed shot. Phillips then picked up his Norinco, but it experienced a malfunction and he didn't know how to clear it. In desperation, he pulled out his Beretta and continued shooting at the police. It was at this moment that Larry Phillips realized that there was no way out, and in an act of desperation, he took his own life using his Beretta. Emil Matasaranu attempted to escape by hijacking a civilian's truck, but failed in his escape attempt. The SWAT team noticed Matasaranu's exposed position and moved in to engage him, using a patrol vehicle for cover. They opened fire on Matasaranu, but they struggled to find an angle on him as he took cover behind the engine block of his stolen vehicle. LAPD SWAT officer Rick Massa decided to go prone and was able to spot Matasaranu's exposed feet. He took a good aim and opened fire, hitting Matasaranu twice in the ankle. Matasaranu collapsed and began firing back at the SWAT team while lying on his back, still partially concealed by the vehicle. With Matasaranu's body now visible and him still firing at SWAT officers, the team returned fire. After being shot 29 times, Matasaranu finally surrendered to the police. They secured his weapon and placed him in handcuffs while searching for additional weapons. Officer Rick Massa stood over Matasaranu, who asked to be finished off, but Massa declined, stating that he would see him in court. Unfortunately, Matasaranu succumbed to his wounds and died 56 minutes later. With this, the deadly shootout came to an end. In the aftermath of this incident, the LAPD recognized the importance of having superior firepower. As a result, they received 600 M16 rifles from the Pentagon, marking the official birth of the requirement for patrol rifles in their arsenal. A year after the incident, 19 LAPD officers were awarded Medals of Valor and were even praised by then-President Bill Clinton. Despite sustaining injuries, the shootout is considered a success for the police, who were significantly outgunned but managed to prevent any civilian or officer deaths. 
the event has left a lasting impact on pop culture. With references in a Megadeth song, a made-for-TV movie titled 44 Minutes, and numerous documentary. It is estimated that Phillips and Matasaranu discharged nearly 1,200 rounds of ammunition, while the LAPD fired approximately 650 rounds. The North Hollywood shootout is forever remembered as one of the most perilous confrontations between criminals and law enforcement in American history. Hello guys, if you liked this video, please make sure to click on the subscribe button. We have many more videos in production, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.